Welcome back guys to another video. So let's see can a modern day Linux operating system like the Fedora 23 workstation run on a low end hardware with RAM as less as just 1 GB. My test board is going to be the Jaguar board. Uh, it has an Intel Atom 3735G. It's a 64 bit quad core processor clocked at 1.3 GHz with a boost clock of 1.8 GHz. And of course, it has just 1 GB of DDR3 RAM. So let's go ahead and power on the Jaguar board and let's see how much time does Fedora take to boot up into the operating system. And that would be the bias uh, of the Jaguar board. And now we have the uh, dual boot option and it will automatically start booting into Fedora. So as you guys can see it was pretty quick but that's not uh, even the 10% of the whole story here. So that is just the boot and the reason it was so quick was that the processor is in no way uh, less capable of running Fedora itself. The whole system is actually being uh, bottlenecked by the RAM. Now this is why the I, I am making this video because uh, as light as you can get an operating system to be there would be a few components that do take up a lot of RAM. Now Fedora is a very light operating system. It's light on the processor but it does need, uh, it can boot really well and can do some stuff in just 1 gig of RAM but it actually needs 2 gigs to uh, be really productive in any manner. So as you can see, I will uh, open up the system monitor application and right after, after the Fedora has just booted up, I have not uh, turned on any other application at this point and you can see the system has already hung. Now uh, I might need to restart it but before I do that, uh, if you guys can see the memory usage is over 82 uh, percent and that's 662 megabytes of the 800 megabyte usable memory out of the one gigabyte onboard ram also the swap is already in use uh, at around 13 percent of 1.5 gb now let's reboot the uh, system and let's talk a little bit more about uh, what swap actually does and what swap is now it doesn't mean that you can have 8 gigs of swap and it will act as if uh, it's your main memory uh, the swap is actually created as a partition on the hard drive so that means it won't be really fast and actually it won't be fast at all it won't be nearly as fast as what you need uh, a modern ram to be uh, the hard drive's read write is only around a few hundred megabytes per second and ram does that stuff in uh, multiples of gigabytes per second so the ram is actually very fast and you need that speed uh, to for your applications to run and while we are talking about applications to run uh, Let's run some applications and let's see what uh, how heavy the system gets and how soon the system gets that heavy because it is going to as it starts filling up the very little remaining RAM it will move on to the swap memory and that is where the problem starts. Once your start swap memory starts to fill the whole system slows down because the swap memory is not fast. So I have the system monitor opened up here and as you can see the cpu is not does not have that high of a usage but the ram is actually uh, something that is being uh, that is being a bottleneck for the whole system so let's open up a heavy browser like chrome now of course there are ways to run proper linux text desktop on uh, such light hardware is to have something light like lxd desktop environment and all of that stuff but uh, what I really wanted to test is a modern day uh, proper uh, desktop based 
uh, Linux operating system so something like Fedora or Ubuntu and of course this also all of that uh, stands true for Ubuntu 14.04 or any other version so let's go ahead and open up YouTube and see how the playback is but uh, of course this doesn't mean that uh, some operating system uh, that every operating system will uh, run this bad there are many operating systems like android uh, and windows 10 that are optimized to run on uh, on devices that have a fast processor but very less ram and they work really fine because they have something uh, they have a better implementation of uh, either something called uh, a z ram which is compressed ram or they actually are designed in a way to use very very low uh, less amount of ram and manage their applications accordingly so let's go ahead and open up a video that is uh, all right so this is the video right here it's running at a very low resolution so it's all fine but as soon as i uh, turn up the resolution things starts to go a little bit bad uh, as you can see uh, uh, the progress bar has actually filled up quite a bit but the video is actually stuttering a lot now the reason is that the ram is filling up and the swap cannot keep up with the speed uh, needed to decode this video so if the if the video's data is going all into the ram uh, into the swap uh, swap memory uh, the decoding speed slows down a lot because the swap memory cannot provide that much amount of uh, bandwidth so as you can see uh, it does it is stuttering a lot uh, the cpu uses is not going high at all because it's really all it's doing is waiting for uh, data to come from the swap file uh, and of course there's a huge bump in the amount of uh, swap uh, and that would be the video itself so let's go and open up some other application let's open up file manager and as you can see the whole system actually starts to stutter a lot uh, there we have the system file manager and as we start opening up heavier apps the whole system would uh, stutter and actually become nearly uh, unusable so let's open up a really heavy uh, uh, software something like NetBeans and let's see what happens now there have been instances instances where uh, an operating system like this just uh, locks up completely and needs to be rebooted uh, something similar to what happened when I first tried to boot this uh, and it's really random but mostly it's when uh, both the swap and the memory are completely full and with the low amount of RAM we have it doesn't take really that, that much long for it to happen and of course if you are a power user you will feel uh, the difference when you use this uh, as I did I was really used to opening up multiple tabs and multiple windows at once but uh, it doesn't really work that well so as you can see I have clicked on a new tab but it still it responded just now and let's see if we can open something up Uh, the mouse is actually stuttering and let's let's try to minimize this if we can
so even though the operating system can work on uh, a low ram environment uh, if you really want to get some work done if you really want to run some software uh, to in this day one gig of ram is really too little uh, and it actually will make your system stutter a lot uh, something very basic as word document editing can be done but then you need uh, but then uh, no other background software can run because it doesn't get enough memory so as you can see I am trying to close NetBeans and it's not happening So the RAM usage is still a lot and closing NetBeans and a few other applications actually uh, got it to drop down a little bit and there we have my website and the video I was playing. Now if you guys can see the video is playing really slowly now you do have the loading icon but the video has uh, quite a lot of buffer ahead of it and the CPU is just waiting for uh, it to receive data uh, from the RAM so this was it guys 1 gig of RAM too little too late and so let's see uh, the best uh, options we have uh, to run on this board is actually Android or uh, something uh, of or another Linux operating system that is a little, little bit lighter but that is for another video uh, thanks for watching and do let me know in the comments what you think about running modern or applications on a system with just one gig of RAM and is it enough for you uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time